Welcome to Transits Friday. So let's have a look at the astrological transits from today, the 29th of December, until next year, until next week, next Friday. So um, yes, it's uh, going to be the new year. There's a lot going on. I'm also planning to do a video on top five transits for 2025, which is something that I'm very much looking forward to my favorite transits of next year, what we can do with it, etc. But this week, there are quite a few things that we're going to talk about. So there are a few change of signs. So Venus is changing signs this week from uh, Sagittarius to Scorpio. But we also have planets changing directions. So we've got Jupiter and Mercury finally moving direct. So it does feel like this sort of you know, change of year here is also fueled by things picking up, picking up speed again, moving ahead again. And, you know, the things that we felt we were a little stuck, we weren't really sure, or it wasn't going on the speed that we wanted it to go, might have a chance to move ahead um, with this turn from 23 to 24. So I'm sort of looking forward to it. It's an interesting week. So let me share my screen and we can start talking about these week's transits. Now, also, um, what's been going on for you? Uh, how was this week? Uh, I've missed you and I've missed doing this. Uh, I have been on holiday, a little holiday, a little week off. So I haven't replied to a few comments. I will do that today. But um, I just really wanted to turn off and like just turn off sounds bad but like to turn electronics off and be a little bit more um I don't know a little bit more inwards uh stay a little bit more present more present with people as well so I went to the beach I'm gonna post a picture on the community as well and the um and the Instagram so you can have a look at a Brazilian beach if you haven't seen it is really beautiful it's really amazing I did get a lot of bites from insects <laughs> that wasn't very nice <laughs> my legs are like covered in bites but nevertheless uh, it was relaxing. It was amazing to be with nature. I think this is something that really helps to um, calm down the nerves. I think I've had a very few stressful weeks. I had to have a professional shooting, professional filming for ads. So there's like some new projects that I'll be launching in 24, which is very exciting, but it's also like hitting the ceiling, you know, there's a ceiling of what success means to us. And when we have to go over that ceiling, it can be very challenging and scary. And I think um, it really sort of stressed me out as well this week or the last two weeks. And um, including getting you, you know, before us. It's a very, very eventful couple of weeks I've had. But what about you? How was the full moon? How was Christmas as well? Like, Merry Christmas to you all. And I hope you had an amazing, beautiful time. And I also want to know what your plans are for the 31st. Are you going to go to a party? Are you going to have friends over? Are you going to be with family, etc.? What's going on there? Um, so let's dive into the astrology. Let's just go into what we're going to be talking about. I am Fernanda Paiva, Hitchhiking Stars. If you're here for the first time, welcome. I hope you come back for more. If you back again, that's wonderful. I love to see you here. So let's dive into the astrology. So this is the 29th. This is today. Um, and you can notice already that Venus is at 29 degrees is Scorpio. So we're just about, we're like last day, um, of uh, the um, uh, Venus being in Scorpio. So Venus is about to move into Sagittarius. So when we're turning 23 to 24, that's where Venus is going to be. Now, one thing I want to call your attention is a exact Mars-Neptune square that we're experiencing today. So again, there might be a few confusions and we don't know direction or what. I think one of the key things with uh, aspects with Neptune is to use our third eye to have more clarity. So rather than 
trying to force something to go in a certain way, it's best to navigate these energies in a more intuitive way. So in a more um, reflective, intuitive, spiritual, you know, that sort of creative as well. There's a lot of creative energy when we have Neptune involved, but that could be some confusion in the air, confusion about what we think about situation without Mercury retrograde and square to Neptune as well, or... Um, or a direction sort of sense, you know, because Mars is like how we take directions, how we make decisions, how we put in energy, you know, is our libido as well. So there might be a little bit of confusion. So I'm planning to go for a few massages today. And I think that's a wonderful way of using Mars Neptune for healing, for healing as well, you know, putting in energy to grow Sagittarius and heal Pisces. So that sounds like a good plan to me. Anyways, uh, and here we are, Saturday. So between Friday and Saturday, the 30th, so between today and tomorrow, that's when Venus will move to Sagittarius. It depends where you are in the world and, you know, etc. But the important thing here is that Venus will move to Sagittarius. Um, it is a complete shift in how we lead our affairs or our connections and love relationships and our values as well i think there's a slight shift in our values and what we'll be valuing around this time uh, a little bit more adventure a little bit more openness wanting to learn something um from our relationships as well you know there's less of that heavy emotional content that scorpio can represent or can reflect so from and going from going down to the den we're sort of coming up um and wanting to explore the horizon, wanting to expand our minds, expand our, our beliefs and our philosophies and etc. So there's a little bit of that there with Venus in Sagittarius, Venus moving to Sagittarius. Now, the interesting thing with that shift as well from Scorpio to Sag is that Venus will be square to uh, Saturn this whole week. And I think this is one of the main aspects of this week as well with the shift to Sag. And I think that energy will be very, very present on the 31st, which is when we're setting intentions to the new year and whatnot. And I think it's a great time for us to review and deal with issues of self-worth. So anything that's on the way there for us to feel good about ourselves, to accept ourselves as we are, or to improve ourselves as well, our relationship to finances as well, you know, all that sort of stuff will be there in the forefront with that Venus square Saturn, um, learning about that sense of worth and taking our values very seriously as well during these days. So you want to set intentions for next year that resonate with your core values. I talk about that a lot and I cannot stop talking about that because I think it's very important to know what your core values are. They're very important to make decisions, to accept or not people in your life, to choose jobs, you know, and works and career path and all of that. If they're aligned with your core values, Life is a lot more fulfilling, right? Because you feel you're aligned. So less disease, less stress, and etc. So that Venus is square Saturn is kind of calling the attention uh, for that. And we still have a Mars Neptune square. So it's an interesting period because we've got this square twice between Sagittarius and Pisces, and they're both ruled by Jupiter, right? So there is a kind of a resonance between them, even though they're different and they do things differently. But I think there is a, um, we need to find and fine tune between what our beliefs are and, and our extroverted energy and our, and our urge to take action, our impulsiveness, all of the things that Sagittarius stands for versus the Pisces, which is about more introversion and um, knowing without knowing, accepting, you know, but both signs have a, an ability to go with the flow. So I think that's kind of one of the bridges that, that we can find and that both do believe in something larger. So this is another thing that we can um, work with, you know, finding what our beliefs are, um, aligning ourselves with the philosophy and making decisions, setting intentions for next year that are connected with a philosophy, a larger perspective of what we believe the world is about and our lives is about as well, all right? So let's move ahead. The 31st, um, which is still very much 
featuring those two squares, you know, Venus, Saturn, Mars, Neptune. But also very important that between the 30th and the 31st, again, depending where you are, that's when Jupiter turns direct. So these days, Jupiter is stationing already to change direction. So the energy of Jupiter is very powerful. Jupiter is ruling both signs of these two squares as well that I talked about and ruling Mercury retrograde as well. So there's something quite important there with Jupiter holding the key to understand those splits, but also to understand what it takes for us to move ahead in our lives, to have the confidence, to feel optimistic. So with Jupiter stationing on the last day of 23, I think there's something to say about feeling more optimistic about 24 and perhaps setting intentions that we are actually believing in. You know how sometimes we set intentions just for the sake of it, because, you know, oh, next year I have to make a list of the things I want to achieve. I think with Jupiter turning direct, we can actually do a list that we can accomplish, that we can believe in it enough to maintain as a promise to ourselves or something like that. But But there is a very powerful Jupiterian energy in the air, um, in these last two days so this is there as well and this is something that we can count on that we can make the most of that we can use to support the dreams the visions create a vision board you know think about what you want um 24 to be like you know that's that's sort of there as well with this jupiter turning direct so very powerful movement there that's one of the planets turning direct that i mentioned in the um in the intro and also find out where that Jupiter is in your chart. Is it doing something to your personal planets? Is it in the first house, in the 10th, in the second, in the fifth house? You know, and those can be some of the dreams and the visions that you can set for next year as well that will be supported by the planetary configurations. All right. So let's move ahead. That's the 1st of January here. Um, and between... This is when uh, between the 1st and the 2nd of January, we'll have um, uh, Mercury turning direct. So if I, there you go, one hour later. So this is 2nd of January, 2 in the morning, and we've got Mercury turning direct. So during New Year's, we also have Mercury stationing. So there might be some miscommunications and, you know, make sure that you know where you're going, you know where you're going to be staying, that you have all of that straightened up and you have all of that very clear because there can be miscommunication with Mercury turning direct. So this change of direction or this optical illusion of the change of direction of a planet also affects, you know, our communication there a little bit more, a little bit more strongly. So... I would suggest to make sure you know where you're going during New Year's, that you get all those details down very, um, very clearly, because there could be some disruption there, you know, travels, disruption, disruptions with your mobiles, you know, losing your phone and et cetera, losing signal in your phone, blah, blah, blah. So with all of that said, on the second early hours, and depending where you are in the world, on the 1st of January as well, Mercury will be turning direct again. So Again, we've got Mercury, we've got Jupiter turning direct. There is a feeling of moving ahead, of setting sails during January, right? In January, we'll also have Uranus turning direct. So what does that mean? That means that all the planets will be direct. So we'll kind of come out of that September period. So when September came, a lot of the planets started going di um, retrograde and we started rethinking, re pondering, revisiting, reassessing, blah, blah, blah. Now is a time to take action. All right. So January onwards is a good time to launch things, to move ahead, to take steps forward because everything pretty much will be direct. All right. Including Mercury and Jupiter and Uranus later on. So let me move this to days um, and and see what else I really want to talk about this week. So I talked about the planets in square, Venus to moving to Sag, um, the Mercury going direct. That's pretty much the most important movements of this week, really. Um, before this, look, 
that's between Monday on the 1st of January that Venus will be squared to Saturn. Again, don't put yourself in situations that don't resonate with your values because we might feel challenged around these things, like not feel valued, not feel loved, you know, if we're going somewhere and we're ignored or blah, 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 you know, there's something to say about that. Um, there's a little bit of a grunt trine in Earth on the 1st of January as well. So if you're planning to do things, I mean, some people just want to have some time off and that's great as well. But this grunt trine in Earth is great for accomplishing things, doing things, sending out emails, you know, just getting yourself busy. Now, um, I do really highly recommend to get some time off. If you don't usually get time off, this is a great time to get a little bit of time off. And I'm really trying to... Um, get myself as well some time off some rest like I said before I had a very stressful couple of weeks before and it's not worth it you know it's just really not worth it um, we need to learn how to spend quality time as well with family with friends with people that we love and yeah just you know I, I sometimes I think gosh I love my work so much like what do I have as a hobby you know and I think these days is a great time to ask ourselves these questions. Do we have to be productive all the time? Do you have those issues as well? You know, uh, do you find difficult to relax as well? And or do you have a great need for relaxation? And, you know, you can't like I think my high sensitivity don't allow me to just work because I get sick or to be a container for stress. Like I'm the first one to just have a bit of a burnout. So I really need to keep track of this. And I think these days I'm going to really um, take some time and, 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 you know, enjoy some time off. Uh, this is the 5th of January and next Friday when we're going to release another video. So I'm not going to go into with too much detail, but that's when Mars moves to Capricorn. So we also have Mars shifting signs later on, um, later on next week. So beginning of Jan. And again, I think that's an energy that can accomplish a lot. I'm talking about taking some time off. But from the 5th of January, we also have that Mars and Capricorn trying to Jupiter and Taurus. There's a lot that can be done. You know, we can definitely um, get closer to our objectives, to our goals um, in January. All right. That's it. I mean, that's that was all I wanted to say about excuse me, about this week. I'm wishing you all a wonderful New Year's. Let me know in the comments, like I said before, what are you doing? Where are you going? If you feel inclined, um, are you going to be setting intentions according to your transits? Do you know what the transits are going to be in 2024? Are there any um, videos that you'd like me to do as well for next year? Any suggestions? Let me know right down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Um, so in the meantime, wishing you a wonderful new year. I hope it's going to be an abundant, beautiful one, full of good health and money and love and all the things that you need, um, and more. All right. And I can be fulfilled and your authentic self as well. So that's it. I'll be seeing you all next week. I hope you have a wonderful week, a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you all in the next year. Bye bye now.